Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the Power Vision Power Array underwater ROV drone submarine, whatever you want to call it with the sonar and we're gonna do a ocean test today. As you can see, I'm out here in uh, Wailea, Maui and I got my daughter Sanaya here. She's got the, you might remember her from helping me with a few other reviews. And I've got tablet I'm gonna be using on the power ray controller. So I'm gonna be recording that and also recording the 4K on the power ray. So anyway, let's get started with the Power Vision Power Ray ocean test. Okay guys, wow, so I actually had to um, go to the car because I want to use the iPad here and as you may know from my unboxing video, you need a screwdriver to take out this middle pad for like um, phones to be able to fit like an iPad in there and they don't give one in the box. Something maybe that PowerRay wants to fix is really looking at um, making this thing easily removable. You know, slide down little little tabs so this thing can just like flip down and be flush and then flip back up if you wanna use a cell phone. Cause that was like a 15 minute walk each way to go to my car. So now I can put in the tablet and we can get started. But that'll definitely ruin your day if you're trying to use a tablet and you don't have a screwdriver to take this little thing off. Okay guys, we are ready to go. It took about a half hour to get this thing ready to go, but I think now we are going. I'm recording the screen for you guys to see. I got everything connected. So we're gonna go into the app and start diving. There's our video. So as you know, this thing won't arm until we are in the water. So I'm gonna need to throw this thing in there. I do have the sonar module on the bottom, so hopefully we're gonna be testing that too. Not gonna really be testing that little uh, magnetic release for fishing module. And it's gotten a little more rough as you can see, so. So now he's holding the spool. Woo, it's definitely more rough right here. Here we go, tossing it out. Okay, it's just gonna float there for a sec. <laughs> Hopefully not gonna get bashed around until I arm this thing. Okay, there we go. So we need to lock it, uh, unlock. And we need to go forward. Okay, let it ra unravel, hon. Thank you, good job. Okay, a little bit precarious. Let's go and do our uh, depth lock on so it'll go down a little bit. And okay, right stick is forward, good. Okay, there we go. So, <laughs> this is gonna be a little rough till we get out. As you can see, it's trying to fight. I do have it in highest speed mode. All right, I'm just gonna go straight out. Let's see if we can lock our head in. You can see it there on my hat cam, kind of shooting water up to try to keep its depth. Get out a little bit past these breakers here. And now we'll try, try to kind of dive down. So let's submerge, whoa, big old spout. There we go. Wow, so getting just yanked around, guys. Check this out. But we are just gonna try to go straight out there. And I'm full throttle forward now. And Sanaya's unraveling, good job. And let's just see if we can get any kind of stability. I know it's pretty rough today at this time. This is like the afternoon, but you know, we wanna just see how this thing handles. I mean, rough seas, it'll be good to see how it does. So no kind of, uh, gosh, roll stability whatsoever. You see this? Whoa. We're just really getting jerked around. Wow, really nice video though, when we're just going straight. Looks like it's doing pretty good. Just getting a little bit of chop in the video. I'm just gonna keep going straight. Let's not hit any coral. Full throttle forward, whoa. So once that cable, so Sanaya, keep an eye on the cable, okay, in there. And tell me when it's just like, just a few more strands, okay? Okay, good, she's gonna watch that for us. And here we go. Try to stay away from the coral and just go out as far as we can. And just kind of get in the deep and I'm not quite full throttle forward. I'm just kind of easy going maybe half throttle just so she can have an easier time. Whoa, 
unraveling it. Okay. Again, no roll stability on this. This is how it's handling here. I'm full throttle forward now. As you can see, it's surfacing because it's pulling back on the tether. Oh, it looks like we're, we're hitting a little bit of a shallow spot. So this may be one, guys, that you want to use a really calm environment because of this stability issue. To be fair, uh, it wasn't this rough in the other ones I reviewed so far, the QIC and the, the Gladius. Okay. So we're getting low on tether. So now he's letting me know. Oh, okay, don't hit the coral, please. I'm trying not to hit the coral, but I am also trying to get out there. Wow, so, okay, so now just hold this tight. Maybe wrap it around your hand a couple times. And so, okay, that's good. Don't let go of it, okay? You're our last resort if it, if it goes away, you gotta hold it. Okay, so Sanaya is holding the cable at the dead end there. That's all it's got. Woo! Man, this is just a, a wild Bronco ride. So maybe not the best day to do this, but at least it'll give you guys an idea of how it is in somewhat windy and a little bit of wind swell. You know, that's all there is here. Just a little bit of rough wind swell. So power ray, note to self. Your next addition, Give it roll stabilization. I know I keep saying that, guys, but it's just something they need to do. So now I'm kind of coming back towards us, but our tether's gonna be pulling away. There's a little parrot fish. So when you have a little slack on the tether, obviously it's not going to pull on itself and mess up its, its horizon so bad. So we're just kind of, I'm just kind of coming back. Nice and easy. You can see the auto color balance is a little wacky. Kind of going in and out. Go back, whoa, reverse. So I don't like that. When you reverse, it kicks the, the front up and your video also goes up because that horizontal motor is not perfectly in the center. So when you go either uh, up or down, down you'll get the camera tilting down up the camera will always tilt up and then it seems like when you go reverse too, watch full reverse look at that it's pointing up at this at the uh, top of the water so a little weird but you know it's manageable so a little worried about that tether but it's a nice keeping an eye on it I'm keeping an eye honey it's okay if it's in the rock like that for a little while there's an angelfish. Let's go explore this guy. So what happens if I let off again? Is it going to keep its horizon? Okay, not bad. You can see the current is pulling it around a little. Just really trying to get this angelfish. Oh, I just stopped recording. Let me start recording again. Starting to get some rock. Getting me a little bit more right stick on the motors. Okay. Okay, so it's definitely doable. You just can't have that tether being pulled at all, or you can't handle it. Woo, big chub. Look at that guy. Man, I'm getting splashed on right here. I just got the controller and my iPad splashed on. I'm trying to follow this guy, keep him in view. So not too hard, pretty easy to keep this guy in view. As long as you're somewhat on their level. See that guy? So here's a good demonstration of following a fish. Oh, just really feathering the sticks. Okay, it's doing a lot better now that that tether's not yanking on it all the time. I'm probably gonna have a heck of a time trying to untangle it, but. Yeah, I'm getting way over there, so <laughs> I'm going to surface again. See if I can kind of spot it. 
Whoa, I'm in the super shallows. Might be being beached over there. I gotta try to get out. Okay, let's follow the tether back. Saw the tether there. I think I'm going. I think I'm going out now. As far as what the video shows. All right, now we're coming towards us. You see it right there. Probably about 75 feet away from us. Okay, that was scary for a second, but we're back. Oh, we're in the surf. <laughs> Well, it's handling some surf okay. Beeline to the left. I'm just trying to get like directly in front of me because I was way over there in those breakers. Just for the heck of it, let's turn on the sonar. So boom, turning on the sonar. It's trying to connect. And there we go. So this is um, a little weird because I can't see any video when the sonar is on, but that's what the sonar looks like, guys. I'm just trying to go forward. So, zoom in, zoom out, uh, decrease sensitivity. Yeah, so not very good for shallow water like this. See how I'm not really, I don't know what's going on. Uh, auto depth. Depth ruler. Yeah, so definitely not good for in the shallows like that. Zoom in, zoom out. <laughs> so, sorry I can't get out into any deeper water, but this is just how shallow it is here. Unbelievably shallow. Gosh, it's only like two meters. I'm looking at the depth there on the bottom, and it's like two meters deep. So just pretty much, it's like three meters, which is just around 10 feet, our maximum depth. Let's see where this thing is again. Surface, at least it's pretty good at surfacing. From three meters to zero, there it is, I see the fountain. So in the pool, when I did my test, that was a little bit weird because the fountain was like spewing everywhere, but it's really useful. When you're trying to locate a line of sight, just go up to the surface, pull down to submerge, and you get a big fountain so you know where it's at. I really like that, actually. Well, do we want to do anything else? Just getting stuck in some coral now. Boy. I'm just having a heck of a time controlling this thing in this rough, rough water. At least we got to see a few fish. And we'll see how the camera looks on screen, you know? See how all that is. So I do see the lights kind of pointing at me. I'm gonna head home. So I'm full stick forward, heading home. Feel the tether pulling on it again. Try to go down a little bit. And a little bit of stick forward. Whoa, just getting yanked all over. Little, try not to hit the coral as much as possible, but it's kind of tough. And it's just being yanked all over. I am trying to throttle forward. There we go, coming on home. Okay, so this is the best it can do when there's no tether pulling on it or ocean problem. Let's go down in the sand. I found a sandy spot. Let's see if it has issues with the sand. Right here, rest in the sand. Okay. This is what I like to do on all my my uh, subs. Whoa, what the? <laughs> is I really like to rest in the sand. Oh, there's a little angelfish. Because I wanna see if the sand will screw it up. I'm full stick down. I'm trying to just sit on it. Come on, just let me sit on the sand here. There we go, okay. Full stick down, now I'm letting the stick off. Okay. Let's see if I can turn left and right while we're on the bottom. Whoa, okay, this, the fish are getting kind of interested, looks like. Okay. And once we bring it up, I just want to see if there's any like problems. Okay, there's a nice shot of a bunch of fish. 
Imagine if we could go deeper. Sorry about that guys, just a really shallow area here. All right, so it didn't get stuck to the bottom too much. It was able to get back up. Just hanging out and viewing these fish. Kind of tracking them, using a little bit of yaw. My left stick. Seeing what's around me. Oh, getting yanked on. Yep, that was a wave. So some waves and the tether will will uh, ruin your day. Oh, there's a pipe fish or a flute fish. Cool. Let me try to follow this guy a little bit. I'm just sure that tether's getting just caught up everywhere. Yeah, so I'm not sure how it's gonna look in the video, but that auto white balance, color balance thing, I'm just seeing some flickers. Of course, the sun kind of went down. It's not the best environment right now, but start pulling it in, hon. Just kind of pull in the tether. And you can just pile it up right here on the bottom. And then we'll untangle it later, okay? Good job. It looks like a little sandy spot. I'm just gonna hang out here for a second. Okay, you can stop pulling it in for a minute. And let's just see what kind of fish there are over here. I just wanna get a little bit more video. Oh, there's a nice one. Checking this sub out. Remember, this thing has that blue light. So I'm gonna do another test here at night. Uh, just to see, you know, how it does at night and what's attracted to it. But without the stabilization on the front, back, or left and right, it is quite bobby, isn't it? Bobbing up and down all over the place. I'm trying to get down in this sand again and just rest here. So I'm pulling down. There we go. Resting in it. And, oh, just getting hit by some waves on the tether. Rest back in the sand here. Come on, go in the sand again. Okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. Let's see what comes around if we just rest in the sand right here. I've got the throttle all the way down still. And I like how I'm still able to turn it. Those stainless steel propellers, that propeller in there is definitely, you know, it's gonna take hopefully the abuse. I think that was stainless steel or aluminum or something. Let's just cruise on the bottom. Getting a little bit of Wi-Fi hiccup. A nice shot of the sand. Not super controllable though. Oh, camera's in the sand. When we get out of the water, we'll see how much sand is in this camera. I'm just gonna kind of cruise and skim on the sand a little bit. See what happens in this kind of situation. Hey, there's a manini. Couple maninis there. Hang out here for a sec. Hey, that's enough, honey. Don't pull anymore. Okay. All right. Looks like we're in a little calm spot. Just observe this guy for a sec. See how the camera just is flashing blue and looks like it's trying to put in a little bit of a red filter and it's kind of flickering. That's in auto mode. Getting into some reef, aren't we? Whoa, where the heck? Uh oh. Let's go up. I think I'm like right on the reef in a super shallow area. Feels like I may have. Did I mess up that motor? <laughs> By giving it a little bit too much sand? I'm not seeing it do that uh, fountain thing anymore. 
Okay, we may have screwed up something on the vertical motor. Let's bring it in and see if we did. Woo! Oh, you know why our battery is super low? 16% battery on the drone. Holy smokes, no wonder it's having power problems. I can't really surface, so I'm gonna take that depth lock off. This one's known to kind of float up on its own. So maybe we'll just pull it in now. So we'll put this controller down out of the way. And I'm gonna retrieve this guy. Just wanna be careful not to scrape it up too much. Whoa, durability test. <laughs> On the reef, whoa! Okay, what it should do is power off its motors. Yeah, so it just disarmed itself. Oh, did it? Nope. Look at that, so it's still spinning on its motors. I thought it was supposed to disarm when you brought it out of water. Oh, no wonder, okay. So there's the problem, look at that. So we got a piece of coral lodged in the propeller okay so i guess that's completely my fault because i was on the sand for so long so let's try to get this out i want to turn it off because uh the motors are still going and i want to be careful about the propellers so we'll slide the lock there we go put that controller on the side now it's just flashing like crazy but see that stopped the motors so maybe definitely be careful doing that because I just totally lodged this piece of coral right in there. Let's turn this thing off and try to dig this coral out. Okay guys, so back kind of away from the water because it was getting pretty rough over there. I'm gonna have to deal with this rat's nest um, and the tether in a little bit. That's one of the things, you know, they need to make some kind of reel where you can just reel it up easily because Sanaya couldn't really easily reel it around that thing. So I was just telling her, to put it in a pile and so now I have to deal with that um, rat's nest. So something Power Vision needs to do is make sure they have some kind of maybe reel stand or auto reel or something that uh, actually all these sub companies need to make. But so what we're gonna need to try to do is dig this piece of coral out. That man, that got really wedged in there. And try to see, save this thing. There we go. So it just got jammed in and you can see the propeller got a little bit chewed up slightly but it looks like it's gonna be okay the motors fine and it looks like the sand didn't get in it just kind of passed through I'm not seeing really any sand in here anywhere just be careful with stuff like this little pieces of coral can get in there and this goes for any sub it can just ruin your day jam it up but it looks okay I mean even though I was banging on the reef just a couple of scratches on the bottom just a little bit there Assessing any other damage the camera is not scratched at all because it's it's kind of uh, guarded You know by this thing here The lights look okay. Not really scratched up. There's a little scratch here from a coral Looks like it got scratched kind of hard besides that uh, durability wise really durable It's just uh, the con on this one is don't try to do it in any kind of rough water like this. It's just really pretty unusable i could see that if you're you were not on shore maybe on a boat there's a boat out there and if you just dropped it off the boat and you went kind of deep and the tether wasn't being pulled around in the shoreline that would probably be no problem but for shoreline use uh, just make sure you have really a very calm shoreline so you remember when uh, i was trying to get out there and sanaya was holding the tether by the way sanaya this bump for such a great help you were thank you so much <laughs> Um, and we didn't get to put on those gl those goggles, remember? Because it was just so darn... The video on here was so rocky in this current, I think you would have got sick. So we'll try that again, where you can put on the goggles and see like the VR. It's gonna be like you're, you're in the driver's seat of the drone, okay? And we can try that when it's a little bit calmer. And that gets us to how just really rocky this thing is. When that tether's pulling on it, man, there's just, it's just all over the place because this is the only vertical motor it has. So there's no stabilization this way or this way. So what's gonna happen is any movement or pull or waves or anything is just gonna make this thing bob all around. And you can kind of see that in the video. So what drone companies need to start doing is making two motors, like a cross motor pattern, aside from the thrusters as well. So they really need one, two, three, four, 
five, six motors to really have these things be stable. You're gonna lose some efficiency, but I'd rather them be really precise and stable than um, you know be super efficient. I think this thing lasted for maybe around an hour because uh, we were kind of really putting it, pushing it hard and uh, there's a lot of current. So I will have that timing up on the screen. I'm gonna cut some of that video out just because it was, there was a lot of bobbing and weaving. So as far as speed and power goes, um, this thing had no problem just pushing its way through the waves. But keep in mind that when you do are going forward and you do any kind of depth trying to go submerge or come up, since this motor is a little bit more to the front, you're not gonna kind of get that even up and down. It's gonna be, if you push up and go forward, it's gonna go like this. And even when I was pulling back, it seemed to want to kind of come down like this. So you're pointing up at the surface. So not super good for like precision type of video taking, but you can see at some, some spots, I was able to kind of follow the fish really easy. And that's because there was no tugging on the tether. And this, uh, this motor didn't need to, there was not really any stabilization necessary. So it could just kind of float there. And I was just pulling, pushing maybe a little bit forward and then rotating. So you can get some nice shots. It's just really hard for it because it doesn't really stabilize itself. And I'm not sure if you're gonna hopefully be able to see in the video like how it was kind of flickering. It was trying to auto white balance and color correct. So I'm not sure how that'll look on the video, but I'll have had that up on the screen from time to time as well. And also recording um, my iPad so you can see exactly what I was seeing through that whole review. So today, didn't really get to uh, test this fishing module, the magnet. We're gonna test that maybe on a calmer day and maybe bring a, a line out there and drop it off and just see how all that works. Today, it was just hard enough just getting around on its own and, and testing it out. So we'll have to do that later. But as far as the sonar goes, just really not useful in this three to four meters max depth I was at. So didn't really get a good chance to, to test all that. It did seem like the fish weren't really scared of this thing when it was going through the water. You could see how close I was getting to the fish. Anyway guys, I hope you liked that review, the initial uh, ocean test of the Power Vision Power Ray underwater drone, ROV, submarine. Again, multiple names. I guess we'll figure one out as they get a little more popular. These are very new. And I hope that was informative for you. And Sanaya, thanks again so much for your help. That was a really good job you did. And next time we'll, we'll put those goggles on you so you can have that experience. And uh, don't forget guys to check this out down in the link below in the description. See what it's all about, see how much it costs. See that there's three different uh, packages you can get, low, medium, and high package. And uh, just check it out, see what the specs are more in depth if you want to. And I will see you and maybe hopefully Sanaya will see you in the next video for the Power Vision, Power Ray, and many more to come. Thanks for watching.